Welcome back once again, all of my low carb friends. And for those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. Today, I have another very easy, very delicious recipe for you. Today, we are going to make keto mini bagels. Very easy, super quick. You have no rising time. All you need to do is mix the ingredients, bake it, and eat it. Super easy, super delicious. And if you want a printable version of this recipe, you can check out my website at janetsdeliciouslowcarbkitchen.com. You can find a printable version of this recipe and other goodies there for you. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see lots of easy, delicious, low-carb keto recipes, make sure you click that subscribe button and click the notification bell that's right next to the subscribe button. That way you can be notified every time I put out videos every Wednesday and Saturday. And if you'd like to help support the channel, make sure you scroll down in the description of the video. You'll see some affiliate links. Anytime you purchase anything using those affiliate links, a small portion of your purchase will go to me and help support the channel. So while we do all that, let's get cooking. Preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Lightly spray eight bagel or donut molds with cooking spray, just a light layer. If you don't have bagel or donut molds, then just line a large baking sheet with parchment paper and set that aside for a minute. In a large mixing bowl, combine 120 grams or around one cup of coconut flour, a fourth teaspoon of salt, 15 grams or around one tablespoon of baking powder, two grams or around a half teaspoon of xanthan gum. If you don't have xanthan gum, you can substitute it for psyllium husk powder or powdered gelatin. If you choose to leave the xanthan gum out completely, it may affect the texture of your dough a little bit. The whole purpose of putting the xanthan gum or a xanthan gum substitute into the dough is to help the dough have a little bit more stretch so that when you shape it into the bagel shape, the dough holds together better and keeps its shape better. Add six grams or around two teaspoons of instant dry yeast. This is optional. The only reason why I am adding it is for taste only. Adding the yeast to this recipe is not going to do anything to add to the rising of the bagel or anything like that. I've told you guys before that coconut flour baked goods really don't rise. Even with the help of yeast, they still don't rise. The only reason I am putting this in is for taste. A lot of times in coconut flour bread recipes, adding a couple teaspoons of instant yeast kind of helps balance out the coconut flour taste. So your bread can taste a little bit more like traditional bread rather than coconut. So that is up to you if you want to add the instant yeast or not. Also, if you're sensitive to coconut flour taste, if you want to, you can add some dry seasonings or dry spices of your choice to, again, help balance out that coconut flour taste. Sift or whisk the dry ingredients all together until it's fully combined and there are no lumps in the dry ingredients. Add three large room temperature eggs. Make sure they are room temperature so they stir in more smooth. Stir the eggs into the dry ingredients until everything is fully combined and all the dry ingredients are moistened by the eggs. If you need to, you can use your fingers a little bit and kind of massage the dry ingredients into the egg. You want to make sure that all of your dry ingredients are moist. Add a half cup of butter that's been melted and cooled. Make sure it is cooled. You do not want to put hot butter into this. Stir the butter in until everything is fully combined. Add 123 grams or around a half cup of room temperature plain yogurt or sour cream. Make sure it is room temperature. Room temperature ingredients give you a smoother dough, which gives you a lighter baked good. Stir the yogurt in until everything is fully combined and a smooth dough has formed. Once your dough has formed, we need to test it and make sure that it is not too dry. So form the dough into a ball, then massage it in your hands a little bit. For me, it's a little bit drier than what I want it to be, so I am going to add two more tablespoons of warm water. Now this can change depending on the density of your coconut flour. As you are massaging your dough ball in your hand, if it seems to be moist and it seems to be holding together really well, then you're good to go. But if you're like me and you're feeling a little bit of a drier texture and little pieces are falling off, then you should add a couple more tablespoons of warm water like I'm doing. 
After you add the two tablespoons of warm water, again, scrape down the sides of your bowl, push the dough to the center of the bowl, and form your dough into a smooth ball. Then massage the ball in your hands for at least one minute. Again, this is to once again make sure of your texture, to make sure that your ingredients are holding together really well. It's also going to help absorb any extra moisture that might be there and help activate the xanthan gum or psyllium husk powder or gelatin, whichever one you chose to use, so that your dough can have the stretch that it needs. After you've massaged the dough for one minute and you're sure of the texture, if you want to, you can fold in some add-ins of your choice, like if you want some chopped berries for blueberry bagels or some nuts or some herbs for more of a savory bagel. That's up to you if you want to add any of that in. I'm just leaving mine plain right now. So form your dough back into a ball, place it back into your mixing bowl and allow it to sit for about five minutes. This is just going to help the ingredients settle in well. And if there is any excess moisture, it's gonna be able to absorb it a little bit. After the dough has sat for five minutes, divide the dough into eight equal portions Line a clean work surface with parchment paper. Roll each portion into a fat log that's around six to eight inches in length, depending on how big you wanna make your bagel. So make sure as you're shaping it that it stays smooth at all times and there are no cracks in your dough. Once you've formed it into your log, then place it inside your bagel or donut mold and press it evenly throughout the mold. Make sure that the dough stays smooth at all times. If at any time you see any cracks in the dough, then just lightly dampen your fingers and rub the cracks out of the dough. If you do not have the molds, then after you've shaped your portion into a log then shape the log around into a circular shape and connect the two ends of the log and dampen your fingers just a little bit and rub the seam of the two ends together so that you have a smooth circle all the way around and place it on your lined baking sheet if you want a little bit more of a brown top then use a fork and stir together one large room temperature egg and one tablespoon of water until they're fully combined. Then lightly brush the egg wash over the tops of each one of the bagels. Place the bagels in your preheated oven and bake at 400 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes or until golden and a tester comes out clean. Once they're done baking, remove the bagels from the oven. They still will be soft, but they will firm up as they cool. So allow them to cool on the pan or in the molds if you've used the molds for at least 10 minutes or until they're firm enough to remove without them falling apart. After the bagels have cooled in the pan and are firm, remove them from the molds or from off your baking sheet and transfer them to a wire rack. Allow them to cool completely before slicing them once the bagels are cooled, if you want to, you can slice them in half horizontally so you have a top and bottom bagel. You can eat them immediately, or if you do have any leftovers, store them in an airtight container at room temperature for up to three days. Eat and enjoy. And that's our recipe of the day. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you click that thumbs up like button, click that subscribe button, leave me a comment if you want to. Let me know if there's any recipes that you'd like to learn how to make and I'll do what I can to get those out there for you. And as always, keep cooking.